Hi, and welcome back to Chemistry Videos with me, Clarissa Sorensen Andrew. We're going to be working a little bit on expanded um, electron configurations today. That's really a general chemistry one topic, um, but it can be used for lots of things. Okay, so a lot of folks do what we call the collapsed or condensed electron configuration. And even further than that, a lot of folks do the noble gas notation of that uh, condensed or collapsed configuration. Okay, so if we were looking at something particularly like, um, let's see, there's fluorine right here. Let's do chlorine. What that would look like, so the collapsed or condensed notation, right, is where basically you follow the periodic table and you state the period number, you state what block you're in, you count the number of elements in that period, in that block, okay? And so, or in that block, in that period, maybe. It's a little bit better. So like, for instance, the first two groups are the S block, right? The last six groups on the periodic table from here to here is the P block, right? Over here, 3 through 12, otherwise known as the transition metals, D block, and these bottom two are the F block. Okay, so when we do collapsed or condensed notation, let's do maybe the noble gas notation for chlorine, right? So this is neon right here. Notice that we move helium over right next to hydrogen when we do this. Um, basically so that we can eliminate one P as it would be on the periodic table. We also subtract one for the D block off of the period number and two off of the F block for the period number. So these become things like 3D and 4D. This whole row is um, through the D block is 3D. This whole row is 4D. This is 5D, 6D. And on the F block, we subtract two from six. That would be four F and five F. Let's do chlorine real quick, which doesn't actually incorporate the D block, All right? So we're gonna do the noble gas notation of that. That would be NE. And then I follow the rest of the configuration after NE. NE basically means when I put it in brackets like that, when I put down neon, that I've done everything from the top left corner through neon, right? So then I follow the rest of the configuration that's through the end of period two. So I do start at period three. This is the S block. So I put three S, count one, two, right? And then I go over to the other part of uh, period three. This is three P and I go one, two, three, four, five. And that is the collapsed, specifically noble gas notation for chlorine. If you wanted to kind of think about, and that's chlorine as the neutral version. If you wanted to think about whether you're right here or not, you would figure out how many electrons are in neon, right? There should be 10 electrons here, right? We should figure out how many electrons we need for chlorine. The atomic number of chlorine is 17. So therefore, if it's neutral, it means it has 17 protons. That's what the atomic number means, but it also means it has 17 electrons. So 10 from neon plus two, the superscripts, plus five equals 17. That's awesome. Well done. So chlorine is done. If I wanted to do the um, ion of chlorine, right, I would add an electron in because the electron chlorine forms a minus one charge. It has an electron configuration that is isoelectronic with its noble gas, which is argon, I think. Is that right? I think so. I don't have a periodic table right in front of me. I've only been teaching this class for 14 years. It's all good. All right, so I would add more, one more electron there. Okay. So, when you look at this, this is awesome, but it only tells us very little about the actual um, numbers that we came up with in chapter seven, the quantum numbers, right? At best, it gives us two of the quantum numbers. It gives us the big number in front, 
which is n, right? That's the equivalent of n, the principal, principal quantum number. And it gives us the block. The block was a letter abbreviation for L, which is also a number. And that would be the secondary quantum number, right? So the one that gives n gives energy and size. L gives the shape. So here we know, based off of Schrodinger's quantum mechanical model, that S is a sphere. It has one orientation. That's why the, letter, the letters and the numbers come out the way they do. So here we could say that for n, n is equal to 3, but the L, the S for the secondary quantum number has a number that's associated with it. For S, that number is 0. And if we wanted to derive the um, different orientations of S, Remember, m sub l is every number between minus l and positive l. Every number between minus 0 and positive 0 is 0, which is where I get that there's one orientation of the sphere, which is not the same for p, right? For p, if I was looking at p here, p has an l equal to 1, which means that's the number associated with p. It comes out of the Schrodinger equation. and if we're looking at the m sub l's there, m sub l is every number from negative l to positive l. That means you have three orientations of p, if you'll recall. And that makes sense because it's the peanut. At least I call it the peanut. I'm sure physical chemists would have a hissy fit if I called it a peanut in front of them, but hopefully you'll forgive me, physical chemists. Um, so the peanut has three different orientations, one along each of the axes. Right, so we have an orientation for x, we have an orientation for y, we have an orientation for z because we're talking about 3D space. Woohoo! I would draw pictures, but you can look in your book. So many better pictures there. What we would really ideally want is we would want some way to show all of the quantum numbers at once. And here we haven't even talked about m sub s, right? m sub s, we know for every um, m sub l, it contains two electrons. Those two electrons can be positive one half or negative one half. Okay, and we show positive one half by showing an arrow that goes up that only has one side. Negative one half with an arrow going down. One of those is going to signify um, the electron spinning clockwise. The other one signifies the electron spinning counterclockwise. It's an arbitrary arbitrary moment to say which one is which. All right, having said that, you can do the right hand rule and everything, but we're not going to care. Okay, so having said that, we could write this in a much more detailed kind of way. Let's go ahead and do NE as well. So let's eliminate the NE and do really the long version of this. So in order to get NE, if I top, start at the top left hand corner, to fill that in, instead of just abbreviating NE, I'm going to go ahead and go 1S2. 2s2, 2p6. So the electron configuration, the, the collapsed version, that I'm going to be expanding out is this one for chlorine. Okay? Now, what you do here, and this is going to be true for um, pretty much every expanded electron configuration that you do, it is a smart idea to get the collapsed version first because then you're just expanding it out. All right, for every S, it has one orientation. Every orientation gets a box, right? So for 1S, we're going to get one box. For 2S, we're going to get two boxes. For 3S, which I'm going to put over here, I'm going to get one box. All right, so um, two boxes total, by the way. <laughs> each, each S gets its own box. 1S gets a box. 2S gets a box. 3s gets a box. I think I said two boxes for 2s, and I meant two boxes total. Sorry. All right, so having said that, I got my s's. For p's, those have three orientations. Each orientation gets its own box. Here we go. There's my three boxes. For 2p, here's my three boxes. For 3p, 
If I were doing something longer with these, these have 10 electrons total, two electrons in each orientation. That means there's five orientations. You can get that from the Emsabels as well, right? And then I have for F seven orientations, so seven boxes there. All right, so you could also label what the Emsabels are, right? So if it, or every orientation gets its own box, then if I were doing a little chart here for M sub L's, all of these S's have an M sub L equal to zero, but the P's have M sub L's equal to positive one, negative one, and zero. And I'm gonna do this in number line order. It is an arbitrary designation to maybe say that this is X, this is Y, this is Z, or the opposite way around. Usually I just label the numbers as opposed to what the axes are, the orientation names are, okay? So in terms of this, we need to fill the boxes. We know how many go in each box. Each box can hold a maximum of two, okay? So for um, the S's, that makes some good sense. We already have two in those. The way I'm gonna fill in those two is I'm gonna couple the spins, okay? So I'm gonna have paired spins, which means that one goes spin up and one goes spin down. All right, for the P's, I'm gonna follow the rules. Um, there are several rules. There's Hund's rule, there's the Pauli exclusion principle, and there's the Aufbau principle, which combines both, okay? So basically between all three of those, what that means is that when you have three boxes, Okay, each of those are of equal energy. The way we designate that in chemistry is we say they're degenerate. Okay, so they are degenerate orbitals. They have equal energy to one another. Before you put two in any one box, you should fill each box with one because these are electrons, they're minuses. They essentially don't wanna be paired unless they have to. And so let's fill each of these with one before I fill any of them with two, okay? Here, I have six, remember I have six electrons here. So I filled each one, one with one, fill the, I pair the rest because that gives me a grand total of two, four, six, right? Six electrons, everything is paired. But over here in P, I only have five electrons. So I fill each box with one. There's three before I fill any of the boxes with two. And there's five, right? There's two, four, five, which means that I have an unpaired electron. And unpaired electrons do all kinds of things. We can talk about paramagnetism. Okay, we can talk about diamagnetism, paramagnetism is where you have everything, where it's kind of odd, it's like the same prefix as paranormal. So you get the idea, you know, paranormal, paramagnetism. Basically paramagnetism means you guys have unpaired electrons, okay? And it can then, this um, chlorine can, when it's in a magnetic field, orient itself and exhibit signs of magnetism kind of cool. Diamagnetism means that everything is paired. So you would never have an unpaired electron in a diamagnetic um, element or ion. Okay, so that's kind of the deal with expanded notation. Expanded notation takes uh, basically a collapsed or condensed notation and expands it out so that if you look closely, you can get N, that's the number in front, L, that's the letter, M sub L is underneath, and M sub S as well. All four quantum numbers displayed right here for your joyousness and viewing pleasure. All right, so until next time, we'll talk to you soon in class or online. All right, have a good day.